I have found a Secretary of State. The fight against corruption is one of his administration's top priorities, and he couldn't have missed an invitation by the British Prime Minister on the anti-corruption summit holding in London. But many critics say the fight is lopsided, while others wonder when the president will begin to publish names of the alleged corrupt officials and how much he has recovered so far. So far, what has come out, what has been recovered, uh, in whatever currency, uh, from which ministry, from which department, from which individuals. Uh, I intend on the 29th to speak on this because all that Nigerians uh, are getting to know is from the newspapers and maybe from radio and television. Uh, because of the number of people arrested that are either uh, EFCC, Director of State Security Services, um, but we want to make a comprehensive report by the 29th. Are you also going to begin to publish names of corrupt uh, government officials or those indicted? Yes, uh, eventually it has to be done because we want to successfully prosecute them. But you know, you, you can't go to the courts unless you have the documents to do the prosecution. We are pleased some of those people signed for this money, uh, send it to their personal bank accounts. Their banks uh, gave a statement, yes, the money is there, when it came, how much of it has been removed, and so on. The president makes reference to the 2016 budget and the fact that if he had not uncovered the padding of the budget, corruption would have crept into the 2016 budget, blaming it on technocrats. I never heard that word padding until this year. <laughs> I never. Well, Abba, you heard the president there specifically saying that those names, who they came from, how much money was going to be published, he was going to do that on the 29th. But it didn't happen. Well, uh, two things. I think this, uh, we have received the greatest help from this clip you showed uh, a short while ago because uh, he then tells uh, the viewer and the critic that the president didn't say you will hear from my mouth names he said will publish the president has given authorization names will be published there's no question about it it's going to come the president the, the minister of information has been given the specific directive mr show you see the thing about the situation now is that Nigerians trust the president to follow through on specifics. And specifically, the president said May 29th. This will be, the report will be made known mm -hmm. May 29th. Today is the 30th. The president so, didn't do that yesterday. And you say it will be. When will it be? What specifics? And how do you expect that the Nigerians who are hearing and seeing that report would even believe that it is true? Will there be a pictorial representation? Would there be specifics that will be followed through? Well, uh, I guess the, 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 you in the media would help the government to present the true situation that obtains with the government. It's, I think it's more complicated than being a simplified process. Uh, there are obviously, there could be a number of countervailing circumstances. Uh, the Minister of Information said that the, the, the President was concerned about judicial implications of uh, some of these disclosures. Uh, it, it, it could have been, I am aware that less than 24 hours be, before he read his speech, of course he had meetings with the high profile you know, judicial officers and all of that. Could have been that that's, that, was, that was the reason. How ever, you know, with the, with the government's we had the President Umaru Eradua, may God bless his soul, in this country. He announced to this country that I'm going to declare emergency on electric power. President Obama said, I'm going to shut down Guantanamo Bay in one year. Sometimes the parliament comes in and then says, don't do this, 
the judiciary, look, th there are so many interfaces uh, that are Im involved in this process, and it's not as easy as that. The important thing is the president has not said, I have cancelled my promise to give this disclosure. This is a matter that will come. You asked for specifics. I can assure you that within the next 48 hours, Wednesday, latest Thursday, all of the information that is required, that is involved in this, will be put before Nigeria by the Minister of Information. Well, you said there's uh, progress made in the fight against Boko Haram. Are we going to get specifics in terms of who are the sponsors of Boko Haram? If they are known, the president will have no reason to hide them from the Nigerian public. As a matter of fact, an ongoing review and investigation is uh, going on in the Office of the National Security Advisor. And, uh, and, and, and people who claim that they have new information are being listened to. Well, if there's any information that the public needs to know, the president has, not, has no reason to hide it from them. Well, you know, at the time where we said that uh, while they referred to that one year, whether or not it's a lost opportunity or not, there were specifics in the party manifesto. You had said they were going to specifically create 3 million jobs. You had said they were going to employ 100,000 policemen. You also did say they were going to generate about 40,000 megawatts of electricity between four to eight years. But at the moment, uh, we don't even have 6,000 megawatts. And experts have said... They don't see the government optimizing 7,000 megawatts in the next 12 months or 18 months, as the VP did say recently. Mm. Mm. Well, you know that uh, 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 the manifesto is a, is, a, is a promise, is also an aspiration. And uh, you know that this country, like many others, have been hit very hard by the fall. 70% of fall in the price of oil. When the manifesto was written, oil sold for perhaps 100 US dollars. Uh, this country's export of oil, which uh, accounts for 90% of our foreign exchange, has been nearly halved by sabotage. You know, all of these things that are going on in the Delta area. I think that on a comparative level, if you look at what is happening in countries such that have made the same mistake as we did of having failed to diversify their economy. Look at uh, Venezuela, for instance. Venezuela has literally exploded today. It has collapsed with the foreign exchange, you know, import of basic things, including food to eat, tea, coffee, sugar, flour. People wait for hours. Announcements made on social media that flour is being sold at point A, will attract tens of thousands of people. You know, so the president is being careful in all of these things, trying to manage, as he said in his speech, he's like a farmer who had always grown 10 bags of grain to feed his family. This year he has only three bags to feed that family. He has to find a way you know, to make the ends meet. So the country is not in a normal situation. And nobody likes it the way it is, but the best efforts is being made. Recruitment into the police is ongoing. A million jobs are being created, half a million directly, half a million indirectly through training of skills. And the party manifesto didn't just say government alone will create. No, we said we will do so through restoration of failed infrastructure and industrialization. Government, in, under the present circumstances, is not a leader, it's industry. It's a facilitator. And we hope that with improvements, power, infrastructure, industry will grow and they, do, they will do their own part. All right, let's wrap up briefly because uh, there are those who say even the ones that were not going to have a direct impact on funds has not been done. But in winding down, what would you say to those who say, We've listened to all the government has said in the past one year. We've seen the promise made in the past one year. We've seen the way the economy is going. And they just think they're not satisfied with what has happened in the last one year. Well, they shouldn't, they, they shouldn't give up because the president is a fighter. Look, to be president, he ran for election three times and supposedly failed in all circumstances before he eventually won. He's not, he's not, he's not a quitter. So the, the thing then to do is that uh, Nigerians should, should have hope that we'll get better. 
There's a lot that is going on to diversify the economy, grow agriculture. The president aspires to stop the, expo the importation of rice and sugar in, a, in about three years, as he said in that speech. Money and all of our foreign exchange and will be plowed into the growth of industry, and that will lead to job creation and, and, and better fortunes for everyone in the country. This country has great future, and, and, and the, the president is in pursuit of that. All right, uh, thank you, Gabo Sheo, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity. Well, I've asked to show today. We thank you all for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Osa. I'm Neil Tagwe. Thank you for watching. Many thanks. I'm Suleiman. I'll let us see you again.